Greetings, bro, chachos. I want to do a real talk with you guys. A little Nancy was in the house today. Usually I do videos I'm by myself because she thinks I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> and uh, so I thought, you know, she's here on the couch, so I can't really kick her out. So she's going to sit here and hang out with me. She's probably not going to say much. You want to say anything? Nope. Okay, so there you go. I shouldn't say much. But um, she's, she's here as eye candy for you little perverts out there. Now, this will be really quick. I don't know when we be quick. I always say it's going to be quick, but I, I talk a lot. So... This is about bullies and, I guess, bad guys and mean dudes. And I'm going to tell a story about um, this guy. And, like, sort of, I guess, just listen to the story. It'll make sense. When I was in grade 10, or I think grade 9, no, grade 10, great fucking up already. In grade 10, I was playing on the senior men's basketball team. We had a practice going on. And this one individual, I guess, uh, I was kicking his ass nonetheless. He was in grade 12. Um, and when I was in grade 10, I'm not the big as the usual guy. Flex like that, Nancy? Like I'm not this, I'm not oh yeah I'm not the big sexual beast I am today you know I was only in grade ten so I was like six five and I, I weigh about two thirty twenty five now but I was like one hundred nine so I was very skinny you know but I was a hell of a basketball player and in grade ten this guy uh, in grade twelve named Cleo thought he was a big stud and basically I was kicking his ass making him look stupid and he stop it and he he started acting like he basically became a jealous bitch. And I uh, took a cheap shot at me, and then after that, you know, things cooled down, calmed down. And then after that, I guess it wasn't good enough because I tried kicking his ass even more. He basically gave me a bow right to the face and ch caught my lip. You ever heard this story before? Yeah. Okay, you never heard a story. So it's the first time for you. And you can, you know, you, you say you don't want to talk, so you just sit there and look good. Um, so basically, elbow in the face, and you know, there's a big fucking brouhaha, and the players on my team were like, what a cocksucker, you got kicked off, and all that shit. And I uh, ended up quitting the team because he I guess he couldn't understand the fact that the cock and goal was beating his ass, fucking doing school in his hoops, fucking sky hooking through the legs, my fucking back slam reverse. I'm an awesome basketball player, right? Yes. How good am I? Awesome. The greatest? The greatest. On a YouTube? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. See, she, she agrees with me. <laughs> That's why we get along so well. She just agrees with everything I say. Um, got a kiss? Oh, yeah. Anyways, so, yeah, and uh, the, the, further on, the story continues. When uh, I guess maybe a few years later, maybe three or four years later, my buddy John, uh, who's, you know, he's a suspect on the uh, the gay list. My gaydar, my spider senses tingle with him. And he had a girlfriend. He, if you live in Vancouver, there's a club called Celebrities, which is a bisexual club, which means both homosexuals and straight individuals go there. And he went there with his girlfriend, so he tells me. I hope it was a girlfriend. I don't know, John, if you're watching this, you're still on my suspect list for being a, a little gay guy. Not there's anything wrong with that, right, Nancy? You think John's gay? Yep. She thinks he's gay. Yeah, Jen, you're gay. Anyways, and um, so he's there at this bi curious club called Celebrities on Davy Street in Vancouver. And who does he see? Okay, you know, these clubs have cage dancers, don't like wearing tight speedo outfits, you know, doing their fucking rave dance to the music, like, do you like that dance shit, right? The, uh, uh. And, anyways, who does he see in there? The guy named Cleo from my grade 12 basketball team who punched me in the face uh, four years previously. Um, so my point of this is, is that tough guys are not necessarily always tough. They're just masquerading, pretending to be tough to overcompensate for their shortcomings. That being that he was a homosexual, not anything's wrong with that, cage dancer, but he tried to pretend like he was a tough guy. But for his job on the side, I guess, future on later on in his life, he was a cage dancer at a gay club. True story. Yeah. So my point is this, guys. Tough guys... Think guys trying to be like you know badass, think they're like you know uh, bullies or whatever. Are you see reason why they're that much of a dickhead is because they're um, they're making up for their shortcomings or insecurities they have about themselves or issues that they are having within themselves. Either that or they're psychopath per have personality disorders and are not to be fucked with because they'll slit your throat and kill you in your sleep. But I think I made a, I make a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my point. Cleo is a cage dancing gay guy uh, at a gay bar. My five. High five up here. Yeah, look at that green watch. Who bought that for you? It's you, baby. <laughs> anyway, so don't be overly upset by a bully. But the point I'm trying to get to here is don't be overly upset by bullies if you guys are having trouble with an asshole. The full point of this is that he's probably a cage dancer at a gay bar. Thank you. And that's real talk. Y'all be cool. Stay in school. Similar drugs, uh, stay black, and uh, don't let the white man bring you down. Mm -mm. What's that? Oh, nothing. Okay, bye. <laughs>